My school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, big up, man in cup. Only for your shield, you make me link up. To watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, what a cup with team, I win the championship this season. Yeah, and yesterday was the Champions Cup year and the champions were out in all their glory and the semi-finalists have been decided in the All-Island Schoolboy Football Knockout. The quarterfinal matches took place on Tuesday across three separate venues with all eight teams involved and those matchups definitely lived up to expectations with all four encounters providing numerous thrills. Let's take a look. Yeah, you can see on the left, Kingston College defeating Dintel Technical by three goals to two. Glenmuir 1-0 over Mona. And then on the right, Clarendon College in a thriller, 3-1 over St. George's College. And Heidel 4-2 over Garver Maceo. So next week, Tuesday, is when the semifinals will be contested. Kingston College versus Glenmuir and Clarendon College versus Heidel. With us on set to review these matchups from yesterday's our in-house football analyst, Lejay Williams. And Lejay, first of all, you know I have to start here. There is nowhere else I can start. You were 50-50 with the predictions yesterday, which is not great, but it's also not bad. So congratulations on your 50%. There are many universities across the world where that is a pass. Well, first of all, Ricardo, I would like to debunk what you're saying about 50%. It was actually higher than that, and just for what that... Was it? was it 75? No, let, let me... I, I, brought, I brought a surprise. Okay. I brought a surprise. This isn't for Mariah, because I know Mariah always had faith in me. Yes. This is for you and people who are stopping me in the road and saying, I'm not no guru, and I need to stop with the predictions. Producer, play this clip for me, please. Oh, dear. All right, then. Money Let's go, Prediction Guru. By the way, uh, Nikhil Tamchandani has been doing a fabulous job with these uh, predictions. I call him the Cricket Prediction Guru. But if you can't get these right, Ligia, I'm going to have to call him in next week um, to predict football as well. So go ahead. Uh, usually I would say no pressure, but there really is no pressure in these. I never feel that. Uh, Mona Glenmuir, I'm going to go for a Glenmuir win. <laughs> Kingston College Dintil. Why it's hard to get better against Kingston College nowadays, you know, but I'm also going for a Dintel win. Clarendon College versus St. George's, I'm going for a Clarendon College win, but that's a stylistic battle for the ages as well. I'm very, I'm looking forward to that a lot. Garvey Marcel, Heidel, I think that's going to be a really close encounter as well. That's one that I'm not too sure about, but I would lean towards, I would probably lean towards Heidel. I'd lean towards Heidel for that one. All you had to say, LJ, is that it was 75%. It was this close, and, no, I, I, and, 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 I, and I even said it I, as a betting man. I'm disappointed in myself because I know I should not bet against Kingston College, but there it is. But yeah, Ricardo. I'm really happy for you. You know why? A... <laughs> why? Because Ricardo has been tarnishing you on the show. Ah, thank you, and, Maria. And, and the promo even says that you're stupid. Oh, and idiot. I, and I, and I, I can't <laughs> believe that. I can't so believe that I'm at so all. I'm so happy. And you even left. Um, you were not supposed to be on set today, and you left your home and you came just to be with us. So exactly. thank you, Lizzie. Thank you. You know, you're welcome, Maria. Viewers at home, you're welcome as well. Ricardo, <laughs> over to you. See, see, you know, one thing I've learned in this business, <laughs> it's always important to have proof, you know, because so people will just say anything now? and it will always sound true. But anyhow, congratulations, Lizzie, on your 75%. By the way, Nikolo Tamchandani got about 110% over the over. last time <laughs> that he predicted anything. But let's talk about the football. What a day we had yesterday. I want to start with Clarendon College versus St. George's College. For me, one of the best games I have seen this season. Is it the best game you have seen this season? Yeah, most definitely. I said it was going to be a stylistic battle for the ages, and I definitely think it was. Both teams came out, they have similar ideals and both teams came out with those ideals and they pursued them in the right ways. The press was good from both teams. Georges tried to sit off a bit and then, but as soon as Clarendon College came over the halfway line, they were on them like white and rice and 
I think that they had a really good game plan and it was executed basically perfectly up until the 85th minute. Klein and Kaja, I think that they were good as well. Georges stifled a lot of what they wanted to accomplish, but Klein and College, they remind me of a club team almost. I think that they're more organized than most club teams in Jamaica even. So I think they were really excellent, some of the things that they wanted to accomplish. Yes, St. George's did an excellent job defending them, but we still saw the Clarendon College quality shine through. And I think by a quite a distance, actually, I think this is the best game I've seen, seen this season so far. Yeah. Before I get to Clarendon College, I want to get your thoughts on how disappointed St. George's College would be because of how good they were and still ended up losing. Well, I spoke to their coach, Neville Bell, after the game, and he was disappointed. He says a really rough one to lose because he feels this is the best his team has played all season. And I agree with them. This is the best I've seen St. George's, and I've watched a lot of St. George's. I watch them the most during preseason also. But one thing that I know that he's pleased with is how much his big players stepped up mm -hmm. in this game. So we talk about Brian Burkett, who always say maybe he doesn't step up in certain moments. He was absolutely superb in my eyes. Zabir Taylor, he's a diminutive player, yes, but he showed so much heart, but so much technical quality as yes. well. Oh, I yes. think he was fantastic as well. Adrian Reed had a really good game also defensively and offensively marshalling, and that's what I wanted from him going into the semi-final and the Champions Cup as well. So I think the positive he can take from this game and the team can take from this game is the fact that going now into the Manning Cup semi-finals, they look like they're in a much better place to take on Mona and whoever else they may play in the final. Yeah, for sure. And for Clarendon College, what sets them apart? Because they were put to the test by St. George's College last night, but the way they withstood the SDGC pressure, especially in the second half, was almost remarkable. There was a point where I think STGC got about six or seven corners in the space of seven or eight minutes. Like, they were just there. Um, and there was an opportunity for Matthew Spence as well where he slammed the ball into the chest of Kahim Dixon from point-blank range. Well done by Kahim Dixon to take that hit, by the way. Um, but somehow they withstood all of that CC and then when they got their opportunities, they pounced. Yeah, because it's quality, but I think most importantly, continuity. So many of their players have been around the program for three years. I, I spoke on commentary yesterday that 14 of their winning team that won the Olivia Shield and the Da Costa Cup last season returned. Usually in, in Manning Cup or Da Costa Cup, when a, when a player is on the bench one year, he's going to come in and start the next. You have players who were on the bench last year for CC that are still on the bench. Unfortunate for them, yes, but that just goes to show the quality that they have throughout the squad. Kaim Dixon has stepped up in a big way this season. Now 40 goal contributions in 17 games. That is obscene. Malachi Douglas, absolutely brilliant. They have brilliant players. I mentioned QP. I mentioned uh, Bolt Barrett, who I thought was the actual man of the match yesterday. So much quality all across the field. And when it comes down to tactics, it's second nature to them now because of that continuity and the fluidity that they show in attack and in defense at times as well. I think it's quite staggering. That's why I say that their setup is up there in terms of the best setups in the island, whether it be a schoolboy or a professional setup. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, and Leger, the only one that you got wrong was the Kingston College match. Why did you bet against Kingston College after what you saw from them this season? Well, I just thought that I thought that Dintil had enough quality because I mentioned on the show before that I think Dintil is not that I think that they can outcoach any anyone or I just think that they had the quality to get the better of Kingston College and I still think that they do because I think Tyrese Go, Giovanni Affleck, Shamari. Uh, Hutchinson, I think all of those players, Shamir Hutchinson, I think all of those players have the quality to break down Kingston Kaja. just didn't show it consistently enough for my liking yesterday. But all my props have to go to Kingston College. This isn't to say, you know, a lot of Kingston College supporters have been saying that I'm, I'm down on the team and I've been so, so, so vocal in my support for them or saying that they're good enough. But I think yesterday they showed enough quality for me to see that they are good enough to be here. I think their, their, their striker is, is quite fantastic daily. I think he had a really good game. Robert Saw at the back, I think, who was there last year, he had that experience in the back line. And I think what they demanded of Saw was actually a man-marking job 
and Tyrese go, and I think he did really well. He was really focused on that job. He scored two penalties as well. And I think Kingston College, when it comes down to having a winning mentality and the heart of a champion, you can't discount those things in sports, and they have it in abundance. Yeah. I don't want to take anything away from Kingston College, right? But how much of yesterday's victory was KC being good as opposed to Dintel Technical self-destructing? And they had the better start. That's what I, where I was going with this. They uh, had the better start. I mean, yes, Dintel did self-destruct, but in terms of, I think if Dintel were outright the better team as I expected them to be, I think the second half would have been much more of a breeze. I think they would have come back into the game much sooner. But even in the second half, I don't think Dintel were that. But they did that. come back in the game, didn't they? they but they, they didn't create, I don't think they created enough. Okay. They didn't create, it's not like, say for instance, when we saw St. George's, when the scores were even against Clarendon, they were hammering on the door, playing well, they were sustaining pressure. Dintel just, they didn't seem like they had a clue a lot of times what to do, players not picking up the right positions at times. So I, I, I do think that Dintel imploded, yes, but credit has to be given to Kingston College for, one, taking advantage of those implosions, and then if, even if you look at the balance of play in the second half, Kingston College should have scored three, four more goals, mm -hmm. if not for bad decision-making. So I do think that the credit in this game has to go to Kingston College. Yeah. How much did Dintel Technical mix, miss the likes of uh, Tamish Richardson, Tayamba Chin, um, who was out of the starting lineup at the last minute because he was originally set to play, um, and 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 the different changes that they had to make because of the injuries in their setup. I do think that they missed those players, but just judging off how Dintel played, especially the mistakes that they made, I don't think he would have made that big of a difference. It, if they were missing different things in terms of build up. Because in, in football, in my eyes, I'm sure in many coaches' eyes as well, build up, your, how you build up is the most important thing. And even in the second half, we saw Dintel start to give more players to the build up in order to try and get KC out, which didn't work. But I do think that their build up was efficient enough, but in the final third, they just weren't good enough. And then they made defensive mistakes and they, they lapsed. And I didn't like the attitude as, as well I saw from the Dintel players. Yeah. From around minute 60, I saw a lot of players arguing. You would have seen it as well, Ricardo, as you were commentating, players arguing off the ball. Um, not, it just didn't seem like they were sure that they were supposed to win this. Like how we saw Clarendon when they buttoned down and even though St. George were on top of them, they buttoned down and they knew what to do. It didn't seem like that for Dintel and it doesn't bode well for their semi-final against Glenmere in the Dacosta Cup coming up. Yeah, and after the match, um, O'Neill Thompson attached to Dintel spoke about that. He said that, you know, indiscipline after scoring the first goal, but the fact that he used the word indiscipline, I was wondering, but now I think it goes, it speaks to what you're telling me, because I was not there, unfortunately, that he felt as if indiscipline after scoring the first goal is one of the reasons why Dintel didn't emerge as winners. Yeah, I think so. And he's indiscipline not only in that sense, but also in terms of a tactical sense. I don't, defensively, as I said, every goal that they conceded was a mistake of their own, whether it be Acha Hutchinson not coming out well enough for the second goal, for the first goal, the, the first penalty that was conceded, it was a poor giveaway from Redison, I believe, in their back line. So, yeah, I, I just think that Dintel weren't good enough on the day. They'll have a lot of things to fix if they want to get to the Acosta Cup final. Yeah, for sure. Of course, the Acosta Cup semifinals will be played on Saturday at two separate venues. The Manning Cup semifinals will be played on Friday and the Champions Cup semifinals will be played next week, Tuesday. And guess what? I'm going to give Mr. Lejay Williams something else to replay in another week or so. Um, can you give us the graphic again, please, so we can have a look at the semi-final matchups and for the 75% prediction guru uh, to tell us what oh. will happen in the last four of this competition. I'm giving him the opportunity to be as good you. as Nikhil uh, Otam Chandani at this Why are we comparing thing. him to Nikhil? Well, first because Nikhil is now the standard. It's the same reason why we compare all West Indies batsmen to Brian Lara and Viv Richards. <gasps> okay, let's say good luck. Let's well, go. Well, first of all, Ricardo, you're saying 75%. 75% prediction guru doesn't quite roll off the tongue. Give me a three-quarter instead, you know? <laughs> I feel like that's much better. But um, for one side of the draw, I see Clarendon getting through. Clarendon will be to the final because I said that Clarendon are winning every single trophy this year. And on the other side of the draw, <laughs> I said it last time that you should not bet against KC. But How once, are you going to bet against them? But once I, my mind is dug in, I think the law of averages dictate that Glenmere will get the better of them next week, Tuesday. 
and it's going to be an Alcline and Affair in the Champions Cup final, as it will be in the Dacosta Cup final as well, by the way. It's going to be Clarendon College versus Glenmuir in the Champions Cup final with CC winning that game. But I I I'll save that for another time. Yeah, he's given us some bonus by saying that they will make it to the Dacosta Cup final as well. Let's see if he's as good as Nikhil. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with more on the Sportsman Zone. Stay with us. <laughs> Which team are the best and are the best and 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 the best